Hey guys, it's your studio. And this is going to be a video about guns that were recently modified. So, here we have my Recon with, uh, it's been power stock. You guys saw it previously, so I can take that off. And I think I've got a Maverick spring in here. It's pretty small. I don't think it's a Maverick spring. I think it's something a little thicker, but I'm not sure. But, reasonably easy prime. Oh, double loaded. I have one in there because I put the clip in. Yep, 60 to 80. Well, some get 80 because you know, like flying crazy darts and stuff. I'm gonna shoot them back here and then I'll add the power stop. Oh, stupid mouse. Yeah, the stupid mouse. Okay, power stop. Yeah, box and such, taking out the prime. Uh, spring has got a little bit of wiggle room, so I can go about to there without the spring actually compressing. So about that much. But yeah, it's a really good blaster. I pipe cutted it. You might be able to see the epoxy around the barrel in there. Mate, probably not, but you can recognize it as epoxy. I just pipe cutted it about one centimeter back from the notch. Well, so it's like an indent in there, but it's about one centimeter back. So, um, that I actually, well, I, for the power stock, I just cut the tip off, tried to pipe cut it, and then just put my screwdriver in there and fried it out. But yeah, that was pretty easy. So, this I did about two weeks back as well. Now, this one is really quirky. Because I don't have truss wires, it's running off two 9 volts, which were, like, the battery tray was cut. The battery tray wires leading to the battery tray were cut, and I attached, I got two 9 volt connectors and tied the wires together on the black and on the red, and um, then I tied those two, the double 9 volt connectors, to the leads that were going to the battery tray. And so I took out the middle piece so that I could lead the wires through, and I know this probably looks like crap, and it is crap. So there's two 9 volts on there, and it's shooting. Oh, I also just got the air stripper, I pipe cut it like SB Nerf did. Let it fall out and epoxy it. I epoxy the hell out. There's a lot of stuff on it. Um, I also removed the air restrictor that you can see in there. Well, not air restrictor pin. The air restrictor is the one that I added a rapid fire rifle spring. And this is actually running on about 17 volts because these batteries were partially used before. But I'm going to shoot it now and just see how long it takes to rev up and how loud it is. Yeah. So it doesn't get much better performance. I just realized I'm gonna have to find all six of those streamlines. Um, it doesn't get much better performance, but it is pretty fun to play with. And once I get some trust fires, um, possibly on my birthday, which is Wednesday, that run will be pretty epic. So um, here, as you know, I was doing a commission for the guy that I got a bunch of stuff from, Longshot Titan Hornet, and some other stuff. And another thing that I got from him when I gave him his Maverick is this, uh, Orange Hyperfire. And it originally had a green trigger and two green dots right here, but I just painted them black with some enamel that my grandma had. And, um, yeah, like the only green showing is on the back of the trigger right there. So, do like that. Yeah, it's just right there. Just a little green. But, um, I took out the air restrictors as well as the pins so I can shoot through much if I want, but I didn't know. And I also added a spring from, I believe it was from the, what's the dark called? It's Leonard, you know, the eight shooter thing. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, over under. Leonard over under. So I've got a tagger, whistler, tagger, whistler in here. And I'll shoot it. It sometimes doesn't catch because the extra spring, but it's still cool. Yeah, that's about 40 to 45. Which is relatively good for hyperfire. The location is perfect. It barely ever skips. Yeah, now, things that I've done today. Um, well, not fully done today, but finished up today. Just second the time. Um, I guess I'll show this first. Long shot front gun. Air restrictors removed. And that's it. I'm probably gonna look for a spring add. Uh, maybe get an orange model of spring. But it really likes Lantern Dark and City Trend Dark. 
So I'll fire this with a uh, lantern dart and a uh, whistler. And yeah, it doesn't get good for But it gets decent. So I guess I'm all stuck on them. This is this was really the first one I've ever done anything. Um, I stretched the return spring so when it's primed, it withers a little bit, which um. I think slows down the plunger, but like this, if I hold it forward, that's how loud it is. And it, I guess it would get about 25, but, you know, that's not necessarily bad, considering I only drilled out the air so. I guess it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I'm going to check the deal with others. I mean, not, it's not amazing, but it's obvious. I'll show you the deal with this. Stop doing that. Don't do that. What are you doing? Sorry, my computer is mean sometimes. Well, not my computer, but I'll hold it with my thumb. Well, you guys can't really hear it out of this type of gun. It's carrot. But some of the air does stop and come out. Try it with the swarm fire. With that one, you can hear how soft it is. So I'll do one, open and one closed. It's a little quieter. Um, second thing I did today. Sharp shot. Okay, I'm good. This gets a near full perfect deal, it's like 99.9%. .9%. Okay, I'll shoot this for tagging. New style, because I only have new style and I'll never have old style. The slow vacuum load, stick one about halfway in. And that's all the way in. I can't push it anymore. Do it again, a little farther. Can't push it anymore. Um, it gets a perfect seal, as you can see by vacuum loading. Yeah. And then the third thing I like today was originally my baby sister. She got this and then got a whiteout night finder because she couldn't prime this. So you might be able to guess that it's a whiteout maverick. I got her into Nerf. She's five. She's gonna be six on April nineteenth. And um, yeah, it works really good. I modified it Friday night at about two in the morning because I was up and I had nothing to do. Um, rotation still works great. What I did today is, and that works really nice. It's okay with the rotation. But I don't have a air restrictor spring up here because it got messed up when I took the hammer. Well, I took it off the hammer, so that wobbles. So that's the only thing I need to do. And I'm going to have to take it all the way back apart. So that might wait a while. You know, do it when I have nothing else to do. So I've got a uh, Tiger Whistler, Tiger Whistler. It also has five pennies behind the spring. Full AR removal. Um, just the pegs were covered with scissors. But here we go. Nice. Um, definitely going to be sidearm at a time, or a secondary sidearm. Um, yeah. Uh, I haven't even checked the seal like it. Yeah, it doesn't get a good seal because I tried to put it back together for the second time. Um, yeah, it just moved out pretty slowly. Um, I put too much Teflon tape on there, or uh, seal tape or whatever. So it wouldn't, the plunger wouldn't move fast enough, and it was like, it sounded stock, like the air was just doing. But I guarantee you that thing will hit 45 with taggers. It really likes taggers as long as I push them in. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There might be some more videos today, because I have to go to lunch with my mom and her boss and stuff. Her work stuff. And yes, say hello to Carlos. Can't wait to do a second one. Alright, well yeah, I'll see you guys later. Um, Thank you for watching. I believe that's everything. Got my dark box right here with the glow putting this stuff. I think I put this in a video before. Yeah. Um. Make sure to check out my next videos today if there are. There will be um. Um. Update on separate guns, not these, not any of these, because they were all in one video and that's recently modified. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. There might be a couple more videos today, as I said, this is the third time. But yeah, you guys are the best. See you later.